Hi guys, today we're going to react to The Cross by Scorpions. This is a buy me a coffee request from Mice and Men. Thank you, Mice and Men, for making yet another request. Thank you, Mice and Men. Mice and Men is one of our biggest supporters and we appreciate everything she sends our way. So thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate the support. Also, we love Scorpions. So this is awesome. This is a slightly more recent song from Scorpions, but it does not have a um, music video. So what we have is the lyrics video, which is uh, what we're going to react to. So let's yeah. check it out. I've ever heard this song. It's extremely recognizable, of course. I'd recognize any Scorpion song when I hear Klaus's voice, but I don't think I've ever heard this song. I think most Scorpion songs I've listened to, they had a more gradual incline, and this starts strong right from the start. That's what it feels like. It's the classic uh, Scorpion frequency. Uh, I love Klaus's voice. His voice resonates. It will, it, there's, a, there's a handful of, uh, of lead vocalists' voices that I uh, uh, hold dear to my heart, and Klaus is one of them. I just love that sound. I'm surprised I don't know this song. I know this song. I've heard it only probably two or three times before. It's a fairly popular with Scorpions uh, fans. I think it's from about 2007-ish, I want to say, from memory. And um, I vaguely remember that Billy Corgan from Smashing Pumpkins was involved with the song in some way. Hmm. I thought he featured in the song. I didn't quite hear him in here, if, if he was there so far. He might pop up, I'm not sure. Um, he may have just played guitar with them. He may have just, you know what I mean, just been involved in some other way. I don't know. Or I might be completely wrong. But from memory, The Cross was was a song that featured Billy Corgan, who I, I also like. I, I was a big uh, Smashing yeah, Pumpkins fan thinking, back yeah. in the day. So yeah, like you said, you know, uh, uh, Klaus's voice, there's only one like it, and uh, you'd recognize it anywhere, and I love it. It just, it gets me every time. This song resides, you know, within within Scorpion's music, probably somewhere in the middle between like a heavier song and a ballad. It has a, it has a slightly sort of ballady feel in places, but it's a little bit faster in others. So I really enjoy that. I like it when they bring the energy up. Their uh, ballads are so iconic, and I think their best songs are ballads. But when they go into into sort of that rock mode, I, I like it. I, I I love hearing them sort of rock out. And this is kind of one of those songs that I like hearing that in. So yeah, yeah. for me, can't go wrong. I don't think there's a Scorpion song that I don't like. Yeah, it does feel like a ballad. But when they go into the choruses visually, I'm, I'm imagining a mushroom cloud, like an explosion. Every time they go into the chorus, that's what I imagine. That, that, that's a, a magic story. mushroom cloud. Yeah, man. <laughs> mushroom cloud. <laughs> a large scale explosion. You said you'd save my soul and sacrifice the innocence that I will never know. And now it's time that you confess. They say that they
lyrics make me think about a very specific story. It's not a, a general philosophical uh, take on, on something. This is something that happened to somebody. There's a victim here and there's a perpetrator. And I don't know what it is, but I do gather from the meaning uh, that it may be somebody who was wronged by someone who was close to them, either a parent or a romantic lover or a sibling or a teacher or a mentor or something like that, that betrayed their trust and hurt them in the worst possible way. This person who's singing, he was a victim and now he is a survivor and he is uh, risen again and he's set out to stop his perpetrator, whoever wronged him from doing it again. Now that's his mission. It does have a, a very strong triumphant vein in it, which I like. There's an uplifting sense in it. It's definitely about betrayal, a betrayal of trust, somewhere along those lines. But it could be many things, though it does tend to take the mind in a certain direction. But because I'm not sure that that is the direction, we should probably jump to conclusions. But some lines like, I'll never let you do this to someone else. No, I could never live with myself. That kind of takes you somewhere yeah. pretty, yeah. pretty, yeah. you know, grim. I remember the first time I heard this song, because it's called The Cross, I don't know why, but I actually thought about betrayal. I thought somebody got sort of double cross. And I think it has many meanings here because it feels like he talks about the cross I'm bearing. So obviously, uh, you know, the, the, the mark it left on me and, and what I'm carrying forward from, from this experience. And it also feels like it might be talking about the church, about everything that's happened with you know yeah all that Inf which we're not going to get into because Infamy, there's not yeah. much it's interesting he goes to sections there that just just take me there you know i always held my tongue and all the things you've done to me are secrets to reveal so it's basically someone who's saying you know i've been quiet for long enough this is wrong i'm gonna blow the whistle on it so yeah. i don't know if it's something that is um personal to the band members or whoever wrote the song but it's definitely personal to someone and um even if it's not a specific story it definitely tells a story of something that i believe has happened to someone somewhere sometime yeah and nail you to the cross it's i'm going to punish you that's what it means i'm going to crucify you the form of punishment because yeah. you deserve it yeah and to show everybody your crime yeah. and and so you can uh atone to it it, it kind of says that now you got to make amends for the demons in my head i'll nail you to the cross the cross i'm bearing so mm -hmm. that's their way of basically uh releasing themselves from yeah. from this cross they're bearing and getting that release getting that person exposed i think is what is meant here Legends. Yeah, I think the more it progressed, the more they narrowed down what it could be about. 
the way you made me kneel you were god yeah, yeah. something to do with the church although it could be it could mean a lot of things there, it there's could a, be multi-layered yeah yeah there's a somewhat of a tragic sense there because this person this survivor he no longer believes in love he no longer believes in trust it changed him you can say for the better because now he's more robust now he can take on the world but there's definitely a negative connotation to proclaim i used to believe in love I don't believe in love anymore. So this person is, is left damaged forever. And he is at a point, at least now, where he feels that believing in love and believing in trust is, is weakness. This is the outcome. This is what remains. The part where, where he says, how dare you use my shame? That shame element means that whatever took place, whatever this wrong thing occurred, it kept happening. It wasn't a one-time thing. It kept going on for a long time. I think that's the tragic element in it. So it's not just uplifting. It's also showing you the scars that this survivor has on himself or, or, or herself. Just to, to comment about what you said before. Yes, it's somebody who believed in love and trust and, and God, and now it doesn't believe in all of those things. But I think that the sense of hope that exists here, that once they do speak out, let the secret out, nail this person to the cross, show everybody what they've done, it will release them from those feelings. So mm -hmm. they might actually slowly get back to believing in certain things and yeah. um, becoming whole again. The funny thing is that 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 section in the song, I believed in love, I believed in trust, that was that was Billy Corgan. So I was I like, didn't oh, know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. 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 Billy Corgan's voice is as recognizable as as Klaus's yeah. voice. You know, it's different, but the, if you hear them anywhere, you know, that's that's just uh, fantastic. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he sang that section and then Klaus came in again and then uh, Billy was uh, in the background. Yeah. So yeah, amazing. I didn't recognize his voice in the song, as but as you mentioned it, I went, yeah, that, that was Billy Corgan, that wasn't Klaus. Yeah, uh, it's mm. beautiful. I, I love both their voices. There's, there's The strength in their voices comes, I think, comes from the same place, from that almost outside of human range. Their voice is, is like a blanket of frequencies that, that is very pleasing to the ear. I agree about Klaus. Uh, Billy Corgan's voice, I think, is a bit different. I think it's almost like a grating voice. A lot of people hate it because it's it's they, they say it's kind of uh, annoying and whatever. To me, I like it because it's special, you know, because yeah. it sounds different. It gives a song, you know, Smashing Pumpkin songs, it gives them this whole new a feel that isn't out there. As far yeah. as Klaus, I think I've said this before, I, I think he's in my sort of top five, top three all-time male rock voices, I think. Scorpions have this thing where they can sing about very, very dark topics, very, very dark themes, and still make you feel great. I'm not sure how they do that, because this song, the subject matter is so dark, but at the end of it, you kind of feel somewhat elated rather than a down, because this can, when you think about it, it can bring you down. So it's a, a sad thing that these types of things have happened, are happening, but this song does does have a sense of hope and triumph in it. So I, I, I yeah. love this song. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. It's surprisingly catchy for its subject matter because of the way the it's chorus, structured. Yeah. yeah, the chorus. You're going, yeah, yeah, it's a song about possible rape, you know. Uh, of, uh, yeah, I love this song. <laughs> then you go, wait, wait a minute, it's harsh material. But yeah, but again, fantastic song. So thank you, Mice and Men, once again uh, for, uh, what did you say, hacking into our soul? We enjoyed it and we appreciate the support. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Mice and Men, for making this request. I think this is the first request you've made that I haven't heard before. So thank you for that. Uh, please keep them coming. We love your requests. If you enjoyed this episode, guys, please be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and click the little bell icon so you get notified on all our future videos. If you have a request you'd like bumped up the line, please make it through Buy Me A Coffee. All contributions are, of course, very much appreciated. Thank you all for sticking with us. Thank you all for your time. Thanks again, guys. We appreciate all the support coming our way. We hope to see more of it in the future. Um, there'll be a uh, link to the Scorpions playlist coming up on the screen at some point here. And uh, yeah, I hope you click on it and check out our other Scorpions reactions. We'll be back in a couple of days with a new episode and we hope to see you all then. Thanks again, guys. See you soon. Bye, Bye guys.